Okay, let's start the webinar. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining to this webinar. Today is the second webinar, and it will be about local bucking simulation of Play Gear Web using Minus FA software. The purpose of the webinar is to give you recommendation of how to perform detailed nonlinear bucking analysis using Midas FA software. And here I will cover what assumption you see record three for fine element analysis. I will show you different approaches how to create um, geometric imperfections of Gitter Web, um, how to define nonlinear steel properties. Then based on the recommendations from Viracode part 1.6, I'll explain how to detect the buckling critical force considering the load deflection equilibrium diagram. And at the end of the webinar uh, will be a working example where I will explain you know, all the necessary steps how to create and calculate the model minus FA. Also, that working example model will be a benchmark test, and I'll show you a comparison of numerical results with experimental test results. In your code 3, part 1.5, exist recommendations about fine element uh, method implementation and design practice. These recommendations can be used for ultimate serviceability and fatigue checks of steel plated structures. Based on different analysis cases, your code recommends to use a model with different properties for geometric and material behavior. Um, if to talk about detailed detail bucking simulation, that is close to real structure conditions. It's preferred to use a uh, to use a last um, model case where you consider material and geometry nonlinearity in combination with a local or global place imperfections. Um, Midas Sophia allows to simulate this problem with many degrees of freedom. Here I would like to explain the geometry nonlinearity. Uh, when you perform elastic analysis of structures subjected to some loads using fine element method, it's assumed that deflections of all the nodes are quite small. In the analysis solver, the fine element stiffness is constant, and no matter what kind of loads and boundaries, uh, boundary conditions were applied, but in a geometry nonlinear analysis, the deflection considered to be large, and uh, the fine element stiffness is a function of element displacement. So uh, during the nonlinear analysis, the element matrix stiffness is being updated uh, at each iteration based on the previous node displacement. Also, element stiffness is updating if you are considering material nonlinear properties. Uh, this assumption allows to, to obtain the stress deformed state of the structure at each iteration with load step. And the product of this um, load displacement diagram from um, the product of this load displacement diagram from, uh, from which you're able to determine the equilibrium structure, um, you, can you can obtain the critical buckling load and you can conduct uh, the local or global stability check of the structure. But here is a one important rule. Um, if you are having a deal with the uh, plate giders, you have to include the initial imperfection. Because without this initial imperfection, uh, you may do not reach the instability or buckling uh, of your gider. And that will be similar, just a simple static analysis. Now, I just want to show uh, several examples of the uh, realistic numerical web local buckling results that uh, can be achieved if to consider the geometry and material nonlinearity non with the initial geometry imperfections. Here on the left um, are results of some experimental tests of the leader with the different panel side ratios. Um, buckling failure was obtained due to shear and painting in the web. 
And on the right, you may see um, numerical post packing results that are quite similar to experiment. And on this slide, another comparison with a tapered guider and long web panel between uh, stiffeners. This detailed backend simulation is suitable not only in designing of new structures, it's suitable in determination of uh, member capacity and existing structures that are under the service long time. For example, if uh, guilders have local corrosion on the web, uh, that means some parts of the web have reduced thickness, your code formulas uh, for hand calculations cannot be used in this case. And using finite element methods, you can uh, define different thickness and shell elements simulating the corrosion. Uh, and you may reduce material properties um, for that elements as well. Now I'd like to talk about imperfections. Generally exist two types of imperfections, the geometrical and the structural imperfections. Geometrical imperfection, for example, uh, is the initial deformations of, com of uh, structural components, shrinkage at welding, uh, differences at the, of the real geometrical values from the nominal ones. And a structural imperfection is a product of residual stress due to the fabrication process. The realistic imperfection, usually unknown for the, for the, uh, for the practical designer, and instead of considering all these effects, it's common to, to apply idealized imperfection to the structure. Eurocode Annex C provides, uh, um, it subdivides uh, imperfections into local and global. Global imperfections usually used for lateral torsional buckling, while local imperfection used uh, for local Bucking of gear webs or plates of orthotropic decks. Here on this slide, you may see an example of how to apply imperfection minus a fee. For example, let's um, consider a gear web imperfection with a convex form. And minus a fee at the middle of a web panel, uh, you have to create a 2D arc or B spline in a vertical direction with a magnitude according to, to the annex table. You can also apply uh, this arc in both directions. Then uh, Midas FA has a special feature, it's a NARP surface, and using which you can uh, create surface with the complex shapes based on the selected lines. The initial lines of uh, NARP surface actually can be imported from AutoCAD as well. So you can create these lines in, inside Midas. If you have software, you, you can import from other software. And here is another example of uh, imperfection modeling. It's a twisting of longitudinal stiffener. The approach of modeling is similar. Um, you have to create um, three sections of stiffener along the web panel and the middle section will be twisted on the magnitude from the uh, annex table and the outer this outer edge of uh, stiffener will have uh, have the shape of arc or b spline and then using the same uh, feature like now surface uh, you create uh, the twisted stiffener surface Eurocode, Eurocode Annex also allows to consider imperfection using linear buckling shape. Um, in this case, uh, firstly, you have to perform linear buckling analysis. Then you check uh, buckling eigen modes, um, select the appropriate mode, and then um, you have to update the initial geometry of fine element model. MIDASFE has a dating model feature for the separation and for scaling of the geometry imperfection can be, uh, the, the scaling of the geometry imperfection can be defined by um, scaling factor or by a maximum value. As for the value, your code allows to 
um, to use an manufacturing tolerance. Now limit state um, nonlinear material properties. Uh, your code allows to consider elastoplastic stress strain diagrams for steel with and without hardening. A minus fee for this, you have to use a Mises constitutive model. If you are not considering hardening, you just define initial yield stress here. And this will be similar to ideal bilinear diagram. If you are considering hardening, you have to define the function of it. And in this function input data, you apply uh, plastic strain and plastic strain relation. And in this plastic strain, the, uh, this plastic strain start, starts from zero. Now limit state criterion. Because you haven't deal with uh, load deflection diagrams, you need to conduct post-processing of uh, bifurcation paths. In Midas FE, you can extract um, the data for, for creating of this load displacement curve um, and save it in an external software like Excel sheet and create this diagram. Or you can plot the diagram directly inside the software. On this slide, you can see uh, possible bifurcation paths um, and the points on this uh, path are the criteria of limit state. Uh, for example, point C1 is a maximum limit load and this is a critical buckling load. Uh, point C2 is a, a bifurcation point before the reach the maximum limit load. So it means that the um, um, buckling can be occurred uh, before the reach of this maximum limit load. Point uh, C3 is the uh, largest uh, tolerable deformation. And the point C4, um, this is the case when equivalent stress in the video web reach the design value. Additionally, you have to check strains and elements of either web. Uh, your code allows key principal strains and elements up to 5%. And these strains should be checked before bucking criteria. Um, Midas FA allows to build a contour of strain uh, in elements, uh, so the check can be done quite easily. Now some recommendations on fine element modeling for the tail buckling analysis. All the necessary parts of structure should be approximated by shell elements. Shell elements uh, describe the real behavior of steel components very well. And shell elements with a linear shape functions are recommended here. Um, if you are considering uh, bridge gear, uh, then the planes, uh, web panels, deepeners, and all other main components should be performed with the show elements. On this slide, you can see an um, example of meshing of typical um, steel box gear with a top orthotropic deck, railway bridge. And here is an example of a meshing and local buckling. Um, also on the slide, you may see some recommendations um, on mesh sites along the, along the side of web um, panel. And for accurate results, it's recommended to keep at least 10 elements and more along the edge where background of plate is expected. Okay, and um, now is a working example of mine, okay. As for example, I will consider a simply supported welded gear from laboratory tests, and I will compare numerical results uh, with the results from experiment. In this example, 
um, the span is almost three meters. And the web thickness is four millimeter and the height is uh, 600 millimeters. Flank width uh, is 200 millimeter and thickness 10 millimeters. The beam was, uh, the beam web has uh, three longitudinal stiffeners only on one side and five uh, vertical stiffeners on both sides. All the elements are made of steel with a uh, yield stress 480 MPI. Um, beam subjected to three point bending and restricted against movements in transfer direction. So this, this constraint produced on the local vacuum. Imperfection in the modeling um, will be according to the York code annex recommendation and the average magnitude of imperfection is five millimeters. And this example will be considered two steps. At the beginning, I will consider linear blocking analysis. In this analysis, I will use default load value. Um, in linear analysis, it doesn't matter what is a load value, as uh, in the results, I will obtain blocking load factor. And then in the second step, I will change my vertical load uh, based on this uh, blocking factor, and I perform a linear analysis. So this is starting point of modeling. Um, you can see line frames, lines frame of the beam. For imperfection, I created uh, edges of longitudinal stiffeners using 2D arc and the magnitude, the maximum magnitude is five millimeters. The next step is create surfaces for wet panels and for stiffeners. It's necessary to use a NARP space. So using this NARP space, you just select uh, lines of, surf of surface and click apply. For other parts, um, necessary to use a paint space. This is how ready surface looks like. The next step is uh, material properties. Have single material properties for all components. And here material properties uh, can be chosen from material database, um, like EN is and uh, a grade C355. For the plasticity, a constitutive model as one meters was chosen, and yield stress uh, can be defined here. The next step is a uh, element properties. Here I have only three element properties. Um, one is four millimeters for web, uh, for Gido web, five millimeter for longitudinal stiffeners, and ten millimeters for flanks and vertical stiffeners. Each um, element property is a 2D plate, and for each element property was defined as The next step is a meshing. Mesh is an after mesh for face. Here's the average um, size of elements, 25 millimeters. And each um, mesh has its own property, like 10, 5, or 4 millimeters. Now, boundary conditions. As for the boundary conditions, uh, 
below the support stiffeners where they find a uh, roller and uh, pin uh, boundary conditions. And where they find uh, constraints um, for flanks, where the vertical stiffeners to construct in the displacement in transverse direction along the y-axis. This will allow me to consider to only local Balkan webs and do not consider global Balkan. And loads. Loads were applied as another loads about the middle uh, vertical stiffeners. The load value is So this is the value, and as a, as a first step, I will consider linear buckling analysis and will obtain linear buckling uh, factor, and then we'll change this load. And now analysis case. Here for analysis case, I was choosing analysis type linear buckling. Number of mods, uh, at least one number of mods should be chosen. Here is chosen five and only positive values. And if you check the results, you can see results on each uh, eigen mode. So the lowest uh, is uh, 56. It means that if, if this vertical loads will have um, Value 56 kilonewton um, will be reached the linear bucket of this uh, gap. So the next step, you can save this model uh, to another file, and this another file will be used for non-linear bucket. For this nonlinear buckle analysis, the vertical load was uh, changed to 70 kN. Uh, from linear, it was um, calculated as 50, uh, 56 kN, but if you perform a linear analysis, you should a little bit increase this load to be sure that you will reach a buckle in nonlinear analysis. So uh, I choose 70 kN as another knot. And then you uh, define new analysis case for nonlinear static analysis. Here you use nonlinear static type of analysis, nonlinear static. And as for the analysis control, you have to check both material nonlinear and geometry nonlinear. As for the iteration, um, if you are working with a linear, with a local Buckling of Gitter Web is enough to use uh, Newton or Epsom. If you are working with a buckling, if you're considering buckling of uh, slender structures like uh, arch or columns, it's preferred to use arc length method. As for the Newton or uh, I used uh, automatic load step. And for the conversion, uh, prefer to use an uh, energy norm with a small value. And because I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create this uh, load deflection diagram. You have to I have to. Uh, it's necessary to save all the steps, all results, and of all steps. And this is how results looks like. So you will receive results at each iteration. And the final iteration will show you the load factor. So you, you multiply this factor 
on your uh, applied load, and this is, will be your um, your critical load. And then you can um, extract results. You can save in table format um, the displacement of uh, not at the middle of your beam, and then create this uh, low displacement background. Now I'd like to explain the now I'd like to explain your results. On this slide, you can see analysis results in comparison with um, experiment. On the left, uh, you can see a load displacement curve, which is quite uh, with a good, which has a good agreement with experimental curve. And in experimental curves are going down. Um, the score is going down. It means it's a post buckling behavior of Guido web. And from analysis curve, you may see design criteria is a point C1 and is a maximum limit load. And on the right, you may see a contour of uh, transverse displacement that reflect web buckling shape from the nonlinear analysis. And this shape is a product of um, combination of shear force and bending moment. And this shape is uh, quite close to the um, to the buckling shape of the experiment as well. So this is how you can perform a detailed nonlinear uh, buckling analysis of uh, Guido Web and Midas Sophie. Um, this is all that I want to show you on this webinar. And now, if you have um, questions, you can ask me your questions in the go to webinar chat. Um, okay, I see the first question. Um, do we have visa to develop such models in MIDAS? Actually, uh, MIDAS FA doesn't support the visa for creating of this model. Um, you should create it manually. But um, the easiest way to create this model is, is to work in, with the AutoCAD at the beginning. In AutoCAD, it's easily draw uh, initial shape of your model and then Import this initial shape in, in Midas FE through the 3D DXF file and then continue modeling. Okay, question, can you explain the boundary condition again, please? Okay, boundary conditions. So here we have vertical stiffener supports uh, for the nodes below the stiffeners. I applied restrictions like this for pin support. And these restrictions applied for uh, road support. Then you have to um, then, then then I applied 
where I have uh, my vertical stiffener at supports and the middle position I applied to the flanks close to the stiffener supplied uh, constraints. along the transverse direction, along the y-axis. And this all boundary conditions for the skido. Um, the question is how to capture lat um, lateral torsional buckling. Mm. If I if I understand the question, I mean uh, how to create how to consider this uh, lateral torsional buckling. For example, if to consider this model, um, lateral torsional buckling for this model, you have to uh, delete constraints in transverse direction, the middle position, and when you apply your load, because you have uh, free movement in, lateral, in, in transverse direction, you will achieve this uh, lateral torsional buckle. Why is the initial imperfection required for the linear elastic back analysis. Actually, for the linear elastic back analysis, imperfection is not required. Uh, if you have a proposed to perform nonlinear back analysis, you need this imperfection. And here at the beginning, I used the model with imperfection because um, I considered two steps. In the first step, I consider linear back where of course, I, I no need to use this imperfection. But I continue modeling of uh, buckling, consider nonlinear analysis. And for nonlinear analysis, it's necessary to use this uh, imperfection. So if you are, if you want to consider only linear buckling, no need to create this imperfection. The question is uh, why Newton Raphson method was uh, chosen instead of arc length method? How can we be sure uh, using Newton Raphson method the final results is really C1 point and not the last step due to some uh, numerical issues? Uh, of course, it's all based on your um, experience on some verification tests. Um, I did some comparison and I found that uh, if to perform linear buckling on web, it's enough to use, in most cases, it's enough to use a Newton Raphson method. Arc method is a method that allow you to consider uh, a very large disp displacement in a post buckling. And this method is suitable if you are considering global buckling, uh, like lateral torsional buckling or buckling of uh, where it very huge and uh, slender structures like arcs and columns. And in this case, you have to uh, consider maybe snap effect or consider um, very complex bifurcation curve. But this is quite an uh, obvious case and, and Newton Russell is enough to use. Um, but anyway, you can perform your local test and choose for your structure the appropriate method of iterative analysis. As for the final results, C1, um, to obtain the criteria point, to, to be sure that the, uh, to find this criteria point, first of all, you have to create um, a load displacement curve. And from this load displacement curve, you can see um, what is a limited criteria. From this one, it's obvious it's a point C1 because I don't have, in this model, I don't have any um, plastic strains before this uh, critical load. Um, the question you mentioned that for steel gear is suitable 
to use shell elements to create a model. So my question is, uh, is it suitable to model the space map using only 3D solid elements? And is it's possible in, uh, in Midas FE? In Midas FE, of course, it's possible to consider solid elements as well. But uh, because you are working, if you are working with the steel structures, with the steel plated structures, these plates, steel components are quite thin uh, members. And no need to use the solid elements for this. The solid elements suitable to use if you are if you perform a detailed analysis of connections or joints, where you need where you need to investigate the local distribution of stresses um, in these connections or joints. If we are talking about steel components, but uh, for this case, if you are working with the uh, um, steel structures for detailed simulation, it's enough to use shell elements. Um, the question is, uh, can this check be carried out using MIDAS serial for bridges? Um, actually, um, the benefit of MIDAS FE uh, is you can, you can work with uh, quite big and complex models. Of course, in MIDAS serial, you can perform the same analysis. But in MIDAS FE, um, you can perform a, com a complex analysis of a big structures with the many elements, with the big matrix of stiffness. Of. And um, the benefit of MIDAS FA is uh, at, the, at the beginning of modeling, you're working with the geometry models, not with the fine elements like in MIDAS CIDL, but with the geometry model. So you can create your geometry using CAD system uh, features, and then you can automatically generate a mesh and with this approach, it's quite easy to perform um, detailed background analysis for uh, big models. The question is, is there any specific reason for literally restraining the GIDO at a different location to generate only local background maps? Uh, yes, uh, the main reason if uh, if you do not restrict in, if you do not restrict your gator against uh, movements in transfer direction, the first uh, uh, eigen modes if you are performing, for example, linear back analysis, the first eigen modes will be global back in most cases, or could be global back. But if you want to be sure that you will uh, obtain a local buckling, you have to specify these restrictions in terms of direction. Does this curve suggest uh, potentially an unsafe conclusion? Um, this curve um, it's also called like equilibrium uh, load, uh, load displacement equilibrium diagram. It's uh, suitable for investigating only stability, and in most cases only for stability analysis of the structure. So this curve doesn't conclude uh, about is it generally safe or not safe. Uh, when you say shell elements, are they the same as plate elements? Um, yes, when, when, when I talk about shell elements, um, in Midas FE, it goes like a plate element. But in terms of shell elements, I mean that this element can keep um, membrane stiffness and bending stiffness. So at the same time, you can consider um, stress deformed state in play and out of play. So the question is um, about import of the model from AutoCAD dataset. Um, actually, when you, re when you received the invitation to this webinar, um, there will be introduction to my SFA video. And that video included um, many examples of uh, how to import model from AutoCAD. And also, um, 
there you can find an example how to create um, the steel structure models as well. Um, on, on this computer, I don't have OptiCAD, so sorry, I can't show you how it works. So the question is, um, show us how to retrieve stress results. Um, okay, if you want to check stress results in element, you in a post uh, post processing, you have to select here element uh, stresses, and here you can see. Um, element stress along x, along y, and along z direction. And you can see here a bot, a middle, and top. Um, it means that a shell element or plate element has three sections a top section, top surface, a middle section, so middle plane of uh, shell element, and a bottom surface. So if you click here, you can see this. And if you want to um, extract these results in a table format, you can go to Post, Extract Results. Here are selecting your element. Here are selecting a stress you, you want to see. You are selecting. Um, iteration steps like all steps and click table and after this table will be generated and this table you can see the number the number of load step uh, load step value and the uh, element stress value Okay, I see that no more questions, and I hope I, ans I answered on all the questions. So I'll, I would like to thank you all for joining this webinar. I hope it was uh, interesting and useful for you. So if you will, if, if later you will have some other additional questions, just send us and inform myasati.com. And thank you all, and goodbye.